so I'm Joseph White and I'm an indie developer in Tokyo. And this game Voxtron is uh, it's designed to run on volumetric displays. So instead of building it out of low-res uh, 2D pixels, it's built out of low-res 3D boxes. Yeah. Uh, so if I if I rotate the the camera, not the world camera, but the view of the virtual voxel display. You can kind of see like all of the uh, text and everything is drawn into the same display. Uh, it's a nice format to work with because it makes it very easy to destroy um, the world in very precise ways. So I, I can, I, you know, I can. Uh, oops. So it's it's um, I mean that's that's just the format by itself. But the actual game is. Uh, because there hasn't been much work done with uh, voxel-based games, uh, I, I'm kind of tempted just to do every genre I can get my hands on. So I've, I've designed the game to be a sort of multi-genre uh, adventure, and um, it's unified by a basic sort of Robotron-style control scheme. So um, that's why it's called Voxtron. I kind of grew out of the Robotron uh, idea. Yeah. And uh, so, not, like I said, not many people work with voxels. And can you explain, I guess, the challenges involved in making a game with them versus polygons? Well, they're actually, um, in some ways, they're really nice to work with because uh, it feels like old school programming. I've, I've made like a virtual 3D linear video memory, like a, a block of you know 8-bit values, yeah. and I can just poke values into it and they show up as cubes. Yeah. So it's, it's very simple in that way. Uh, the hard part is that there are no tools for designing voxel animation right. and voxel There's models. Right, no Maya for voxels. Right. <laughs> yeah. Which is a shame because it's a really, really fun thing to do and uh, very easy for people to make stuff fast. So, uh, so I've, I've, I've built the game with an editor. Yeah, so the, the editor is um, based on this kind of, you know, Lego-ish interface where you can just okay. draw stuff really nearly. And then, then you can uh, design rooms by placing them into the room, and you know you get this kind of thing. So, so people can already uh, design basic levels and post them on the forum and share them and stuff like that. Is there a way for people to share their levels with each other? Yeah, you can uh, you can just post them on the forum and okay. you can download them directly from the game. So, oh, I'll show you a level that someone's made. Sure, please. Um, <laughs> so this is the list of levels that uh, oh, wow. you know people have posted on the online. Um, so you already got thousands of entries. Oh, uh, there's a, it's a, so those numbers are not sequential, so it's, oh, okay, it's, okay. it's more like it's more like a few hundred or something like that. Um, yeah, so so a lot of them are, are just based on you know like nice uh, kind of garish scenery, which I like. And can people define their own objectives for the levels they design? Uh, they will be able to soon. Um, so I've, I've just made a monster editor, so people can design their own uh, characters and behaviors. And pretty soon there'll be scripting. And at that, at that point, it'll be kind of a general game maker. So you can make games in Voxtron, which actually have nothing to do with Voxtron. You know, you could make like Voxtron Tennis or you know, something like that. Right, right. Yeah. And are you, uh, are you sticking to PC only? Are there, are there hopes to sort of expand into something like to say the 3DS, where you can kind of have a sort of depth, the Z depth? You know, is that is that something you're interested in at all? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I I, I mean, I'll, uh, it's hard to license and get that. Yeah. Well, going, so. after everything is um, basically working, I'll basically pour it to everything I can. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. And uh, actually, so if we wanted to, is there a way to get this game already? Is it on? Uh, yeah, you can you can download the alpha for Mac, Linux, or Windows. Okay. Uh, yeah, just from Voxtron.com. Awesome.